Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Father Mike again, uh, second day of lockdown. It's the fourth Sunday of Lent, um, and this will be the Sunday Mass readings. And I wanted to uh, tell you what the Mass is. We're going to put all the Mass intentions into this one Mass. Father McCarthy might be able to do a Mass and upload today as well, too. So for today, today's Mass is being offered for the Gilski and Rajewski families, Pat and Katie Byrne, Don Love Jr., Nancy Lee O'Connor, Eileen and Jack Owen, Don Quinn, Nancy Lee O'Connor, Deli and Alfredo Jarvina, John Cooney, and John Needham. So again, friends, let's recollect ourselves as we prepare to uh, celebrate the Sunday Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall want, not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage, you spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He's of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is, that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. 
We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, that This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. So friends, we're here again through virtual, uh, virtual Mass and virtual homily on this fourth Sunday of Lent. And most of our lives have been, most people's lives now in the whole world have been turned sort of upside down. God is forcing us to see life from a different perspective. Now we know the Lenten word, the word in Scripture that we use often for having to see things differently is metanoia, is the Greek. In English, it's repent. Again, I know there's negative connotations to that word, uh, but it really gets at the heart of, of the word repent or metanoia, is to change the way you see. And that's what God wants from us, I think, in this time. I know it's scary for a lot of people with this pandemic we care about our loved ones, we care about our finances, we care about what's going to happen next, and am I or my loved ones even going to live through it? That's a real concern. But in this time of concern and fear like that, can we see, can we try to see how God's giving us a different perspective to value what's most important? Oftentimes we would not choose a different perspective. We get trapped in our routines. You know, to use a, light, a, a more lighthearted image uh, about the change of perspective, the first thing I thought, one of the first things I thought of about a different, how we need a different perspective was came from a great uh, movie some years ago called Dead Poets Society with Robin, God rest his soul, Robin Williams playing a, an English teacher teaching kind of upper crust, stuffy high school academy boys about poetry. And maybe one of the most famous scenes, he, he calls the boys up and says, he jumps up on his desk and explains that he did it because we often need to see things from a different perspective. And he called the boys up to jump up on the desk and just be able to see the world and their own lives in it in a different way. At one point he has him tear out the introduction to the textbook about poetry, the introduction. He just says, tear it out. Don't worry, it's not the Bible. You won't go to hell. I think in some way, we are being forced to put aside our own personal textbook that maybe we had written about our lives. And Christ is calling us to see things because we wouldn't have chosen it from a different perspective. And just like Robin Williams in that movie, the whole goal for him as a teacher was to help inspire and give these, these boys courage in their lives to choose their own path. And it's not explicitly Christian, but I think the idea for us is that explicitly as Catholics that Christ wants this time of suffering, of confusion and fear to refocus us. So let's take a look at our readings and see how they might help us. 
in understanding what God's perspective is. In our first reading, it's made very clear that we tend to see things on a very superficial level. Our first reading is where Samuel, God tells Samuel to go to, to Jesse's house and to anoint the king of Israel. And Samuel sees the seven sons who are lofty of stature and maybe big and strong. And, and God says, none of them are going to be king. He, they, God chooses the runt of, of the litter, David. And he says, that's him. Anoint him. And this is the, what, what the Lord says. Not as man sees, does God see. Because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Our lives are often so filled with appearances. We are basing things on superficial levels. Maybe we have our own dreams for ourselves or our loved ones in such a path that maybe heaven's not the goal. We can be very short-sighted. We want to retire at age 50-something and think that that's the promised land. And it's not that these smaller hopes and dreams aren't necessarily good, but they're not the ultimate good, very often. And that's what Christ wants to remind us of. What is the ultimate good that we are seeking? What is the ultimate good? Heaven is the goal. Now, in the Gospel today, so first, our perspective is not always like God's. And then in the Gospel, we hear some answers about why God might be allowing this turn time of crisis. And in the gospel we heard about a man who was born blind. The disciples asked about him, was it his own sin or that of his parents that he was born this way? People ask that now, is God punishing the world because of our sins? It's hard to say, but Jesus' answer doesn't say that that the man's being punished for his own sin or his parents. Jesus says, neither, it's so that the works of God might be revealed. So man, that man was not born blind because of a sin he had committed. This is a fallen world. Uh, it's based off of the original sin that we all suffer in these various ways. God didn't make blindness. He didn't make death. He didn't make the coronavirus. He didn't make this pandemic directly. But he allows it. And why? So that the works of God might be revealed. The work of God that was revealed today in this gospel was that this man born blind was to be able to be healed. But notice, not just so that he could physically see. It's so that he could see that Christ was his Savior. The solution that we all need to this fallen world isn't just more physical stuff. We do need to take care of each other. We need jobs. We need all those things. Again, I know we need those things. But what our Lord's calling us to see is how much more we need Him. Him who leads us to eternal life and all the means of grace and teaching and truth and goodness He's given us to get us to that end. Do you think we need this change of perspective, friends? I do. You've heard some of the studies. More and more people are nuns. They don't believe in God at all. Catholics have lost track of the Holy Eucharist, that is Christ's real presence. Uh, there's so many things. We could go through a laundry list of woes and problems statistically. But now that this has come, I've already heard from many people. They miss that they can't come into church and pray with the Lord. They miss the community of being with each other and praying. They missed the Holy Eucharist. You know, I, I once heard a story about a woman. A priest told a story about a woman who had cancer. And she went into full remission. But one day she went to him as her spiritual director and said, You know, Father, I know this might sound strange, but oftentimes I miss my cancer. Now, she didn't miss it for its sake, but what it produced. It produced in her a much deeper sense of prayer and dependence on God. She knew her own fragility much more. She was anticipating her own death, but God delivered her from that. 
And at times she got complacent and would remember how she had to rely with her whole heart on the Lord in her daily prayer, uh, in Holy Eucharist, um, and in all those ways that Christ has given. And she could see why God might have allowed that terrible thing, though he didn't create it to begin with, why he have allowed it so that his works could be, uh, the great glory of God could be revealed through it. Friends, might God be allowing these annoying and scary times so that we might change our perspectives? May we take advantage of this time to put aside any selfish or sinful distractions to go closer to Christ and to say as the words of the psalmist, that famous and beautiful psalm we heard, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we gather our prayers for our needs and for the needs of the whole world. For the Church, May God help us remain faithful to all of his commandments and grow in the fullness of the truth. Lord, have mercy. For elected officials, may the Lord grant them the fortitude to remain true to his justice and wisdom. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort. Lord, have mercy. For all of us in this parish, those watching through, uh, through video, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. Lord, have mercy. And for all those who have died, especially with those that have nobody to pray for them, may they rest in the fullness of God's peace. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we know that you are the giver of all good things. Hear and answer our prayers according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord anointed my eyes, I went, washed, I saw, and I believed in God. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Friends, before the prayer over the people, uh, if you do like these videos, I, I think you can subscribe or um, hit the like buttons and such. We're hoping to put Father McCarthy's Mass uh, up, uh, masses up too when he when we get those videoed, um, and this is a way for you to stay connected with our Lord in the Eucharist. It, it, again, I I'm privileged to be able to offer these masses and receive Jesus in this way. That right now you have to make a spiritual communion, um, but let's stay connected in prayer and support for one another in these challenging times. And over the coming weeks, I'll I'll try to put out video content about updates about the merger and just what's going on to try and keep you better informed than just just through the bulletin, which is good. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. <laughs> 